So we we have to attach this to this to the second contactor. Now go to the pole. It is two MCR now. It belongs to two MCR. Okay. And this contactor is two MC, MCR now. So now this contactor need A2. I'm just trying to tidy things up. I don't like when something is rough, kind of. So now, since A2 is the common neutral, we can share A2 between the two contactors. It makes things easy. That we don't have to make things easier so that we don't have to start running length of wires. Because these contactors are most time beside themselves in the in the electrical cabinet. So why run length of wire from the power source? Just tap the A2, so A2, which is neutral. So most time in electrical, we call A2 or neutral a common terminal. Call it a common terminal. So we share the A2. Now, our A1, our push button one, we want to use the same stop button to control the two. So if you are using the same, if we are not using the same stop button, this reverse, uh, contactor reverse and uh, push button. We pick his supply from the energy source. Let me tidy this one up. It's kind of rough too. I want something neat. Okay. So, but since we want the same stop button to stop them, so all we do is loop this one. Loop, 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 loop. So now this one to A1. Now, I need somebody to tell me what is missing here now. Oh, I seem not to be having, to be hearing any audio sound. Good evening. About, am I the only, is, are you the only one that can't hear me? Others, please signify before I continue. I want to be sure people are hearing me. Please signify that you can hear me. I want to be sure others are hearing me. Hello, guys. Are people there? Can you hear me? Okay, good. Hey, <laughs> Joseph, you're right. We need retaining contact. We need retaining contact. But before the retaining contact, for those people that, that, that didn't partake in this training yesterday, we'll show you what retaining contact can do. So let's simulate first and see what we're doing. So let's start. Sorry, let me put on my breaker. My electric motor is running. Stop, so that we can go to reverse. Stop. Reverse. Did that, okay, it has changed. I was thinking it didn't change then. It has changed now. But the problem is, if I take off my hand, it will stop. You can see the green has disappeared. That's why we need the contact that can retain it. So we need the retaining contact for two MCR. This first contactor is one MCR, that's the name. We need another contactor, another, uh, we need the retaining contact for two MCR. This one here is the retaining contact for one MCR. So let me just move the name closer so that the guys will see the name of the contactor. I'm coming. I always have issues tidying things up on the computer here. Yeah. Probably I'm not the I'm not a very neat guy. Okay. So we need a retaining contact for the second contactor. So we need, which is an auxiliary contact. Okay, we have it. This is it. So we need to assign it to the second contactor, which is two MCR. Yes, so we've assigned it. You can see the name is also 2MCR 
Yeah. So we have a retaining contact now. So let's simulate and see. So let's on our breaker forward. Our motor is running. So let's stop and go. You can see the direction of revolution. It's going counterclockwise. Stop. Reverse. What's wrong? What is wrong with our reverse contactor? Is it, why is it not working? Okay. It's not retaining. It's not retaining. Okay, sorry, I made a mistake. I made a mistake. Um, we are picking my retaining supply is wrong. Sorry. It should be from the stop. If you remember what we said yesterday, the retaining contact should pick immediately after the stop button um zoom has warned, warned me now that we have uh, 10 minutes left so i think once the time elapses we'll stop and restart the video again i'm sure we're all we're all okay with that that means we'll, we'll share another uh, invitation link you know the restriction on on zoom is 40 minutes or on, on, on unless we upgrade so now let's start again on your breaker Forward, it's running. Stop. So we can see the speed is reducing little by little. And I need to do something just to make this thing clear. The RPM of the motor, let me bring it here. Here's the motor RPM. So that you can see the direction. Motor RPM. So let's, let me start again. I think we're going faster tonight. Let me on my breaker. So the motor is running. The, the motor has attained its speed, 1,758.4 RPM. So we want to go reverse. That means we have to stop. The motor is stopping. The RPM is reducing 1,900, So once it stops, then but in, in real life, the motor will, will slow down faster because you know there is going to be something connected to it. So it, you know the reason why this thing didn't slow down early was um, because of inertia, the law of physics. We say that a body will continue, a body at rest will continue at rest, or a body motion will continue in motion unless it is acted upon by a force. So I think we will couple this model to maybe a gearbox, a conveyor, to any load. The load we yes, we have to stop the motor before we reverse. Yes. Because if you didn't stop the motor, then face will jam. You create what, was, what we call face jamming. But there's a way you can do it in, sl in split seconds. We will still get to that. We still get to that. It's little by little. But for this kind of motor, you have to stop. There's no way you will reverse a motor without stopping the first one. But if you didn't stop, then you are, you are, you are. Now, imagine if you look at my drawing now. Look at point V on the motor. T2 is going to point V here, which is L2. At the same time, T3 is coming to the same. So you, you, the, those two, uh, the two faces, they will meet themselves and it will create a spark and probably fire or trip your breaker or whatever. If you have a very good breaker, it won't cause fire if you trip your breaker. So that's why you need to stop this one before going to the other one. So let me start the reverse. Now see, it has reversed. The direction of rotation has changed now. I think we can see that now. But something is wrong with my design here. Who can point it out if I move forward? I, anybody that can get that thing right, something that I need to include, that is better include in this. Anybody that can get that thing right, I can schedule a personal, one personal meeting with the person or a personal training. So any suggestion? Um, I will count five to five to five from five to one, no, 10 to one, 10, nine, eight, Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Nobody can think of what could go wrong. Remember, we, we engineered, we engineers, we designed this. But the person that we operate might not be an engineer. You know, people that operate, actually, look, look at people that drive car. The rule is you have to press your clutch before you, you engage your gear. But some people still don't comply. They will just... 
they will just press the gear anyhow. You know, there are a lot of people. So these people, they, they damage things. Like, that's why some people's flywheel will burn even before the, the b- b- before it's time. So that's why as an engineer, you have to create what we call redundancy. Be sure and certain. You do something such a way that even a motherfucker will not spoil things from, for you. Even if the person can't operate, he won't be able to spoil it. So now, what if when this motor, this reverse motor was running, the motherfucker instead of stopping, immediately press forward. You can see the two coming together. What happened? You can see the circuit is dead. What happens to my breaker? Who, who can see what happens to my breaker? Can anyone see what happens to my breaker? I need people to signify so that I, I, we know I have people here with me that, and that we're together. I need someone to signify. Let me start it again. Let me, let me simulate that thing again. Let me stop everything on my breaker. This is my circuit breaker. That's why we call it circuit breaker. It's called miniature circuit breaker, MCB. It depends on the type you're using. So I started my motor. I start my motor, I mean, it was running. Instead of pressing stop, I just press reverse directly. Bam. That's what happened to my circuit breaker. It tripped. Because there is a short circuit here and here. Line two is is when you trace this line. Line two is is is, is bridging to line nine and then line line three is going to two and line two is going to three. So like the question you ask then, must we stop before we reverse? Yes. So now because we had the motherfucker that didn't stop before he reversed, we had this problem now. And when you start having this, imagine this contactor, uh, this breaker is not okay. Oh, they didn't read the breaker. Well, what will happen? Look, this, this thing can cause damage. You can burn your electric motor. That is why we need to include something. We need to include it that contactor two will not start if one is working. And contactor one will not start if two is working. So how can we do that? So that the contactors will not start if one is working. And anyone suggest? Let me make this thing. Let me tidy this thing up. I want to try and make it as neat as possible. Um, I'm trying to make it as neat as possible. Don't worry, I'm just rearranging. You'll see clearly now. How to come here. I just want to make sure it's neat. A number of a rough circuit. Uh, so can anyone suggest, uh, comment, please comment. Please comment, engineer. You want me to unmute you or you want to type? Let me know how you want to, uh, whatever you prefer. Let me know. I'm trying to rearrange my circuit so that at least it will be there will be some sanity. Please, engineer, engineer Olabi, please comment. So all I'm just trying to do is to tidy up my circuit so that everything will be neat. I don't like rough circuit. This one is too rough. Okay, I will unmute you so that we can hear you. Yeah, you are live now. Okay, uh, good evening, everyone. Um, I think um, what we need to um, place there is to have an auxiliary contact. Okay. Yes, I think that's what we needed. How, how would the auxiliary contact work? What is, what is the function of the auxiliary contact? Yes, to um, deactivate either um, the forward or the reverse uh, contactor. Whenever contactor one works and um, energizes, it deactivates um, con- uh, that's contactor two. And um, also whenever contactor two is working, 
it deactivates contactor one. So thank you. All right, thanks. That's a very good contribution. Yeah. Um, to do what you have, if we were to do what you want us to do, using an auxiliary contact won't give, with auxiliary contact won't achieve what you want us to do. Something that we deactivate one for one to start. The reason being that you, for that you need another contact. All I did was I rearranged my circuit so that it becomes, and another thing is, most time we forget to turn on a circuit breaker. So I want to make sure that the supply for the, for the controls too, they are, it's all coming from the circuit breaker. You can see I have a three phase supply that has a, what is it called? Uh, it's a three phase supply that has neutral. So I want to make sure it's a 415 volt and not 208. We are not in the US. 415. That's the standard in Nigeria. Over there, you know, they use 120. So here now we'll be having 415 volts. So engineer, um, engineer Shola, what I said then was, you can't, if you want some one that will stop the other one before starting one, you won't be using just two contactors. Probably you will add another extra relay that will do the job of the stopping and starting. You understand? So we need, so I, I think you said you had another idea. So let's hear from you again. So while I tidy up this circuit. Oh yeah, you are live now. And in Ashala, you are live. Oh, sorry. Uh, what is happening? I thought I've on, uh, on, on mute, okay. Okay, you are live now, please talk to us. Okay, I am thinking I would like to hear opinion from other people first, then I'll be able to come in. Okay, any other, do, you, do we have any idea or suggestion from others? Let people ship things in there so that we know that we're, we're, we're on the same face and we're together. We need people to, sh to chip in their ideas, please. Uh, no idea. Hey, Guinea Ashola, please tell us what you think again. Is my internet okay? I think my internet is okay. Oh, yeah. So, what do you think? Uh, 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 idea. Yes, I, I was just thinking of. Um, a kind of um, forward and reverse switch formally. Okay. So, but going through the circuit diagram again, I think I wouldn't like a forward and reverse switch. I just prefer the push button, which is forward and reverse. Okay. You then, um, but I still try. I'm still trying to see um, the um, the reason why we don't need a an auxiliary contact right now. But I was thinking we need an extra auxiliary contact which will deactivate the Ford, either the Ford um, um, contact or maybe um, the two, what do you write there, two MCR, or then you have it on both sides and it's going to be placed along um, the same, uh, let's say the point whereby it's going to deactivate the coil of MC1 that is going to be placed directly on MC2. Uh, then, uh, was, um, sorry for cutting you short. I didn't say we don't need yes. a direct contact. What I said okay. was, yeah, we, we don't need a direct contact that we start that one. You said what you said was the direct contact, we stop this one and start that one. That was what you said, if I'm right. No, no, no. No, why I was, maybe probably I said something that was not okay, let me understand what you. I was thinking. What I was saying is this. Now, if we Please, we um, we clicked on um, the Ford um, push button. What I'm expecting the auxiliary contacts to do is to energize M. That's two MCR. Okay. Now, if I place press the Ford push button, I'm expecting two MCR to switch to energize. Okay. And the, the auxiliary contact is going to be placed directly close to your 
is on um, two MCR. So we're going to connect it directly to one MCR. That means by the time I press my fourth um, push button, it's going to de-energize de M one MCR. Are you with me? I, I, I'm with you. Okay. And by the time I press my reverse uh, push button, that means the auxiliary contact on one MCR yeah. would deactivate two MCR. Okay. Are you with me? Do you get me? I, I, I get you. I get what you're saying. So now. Yeah, so I don't, I don't think, so that's what? why I said I don't think we need an extra. The problem, the problem we are, you have, you remember, I think we all did what we call transient. Transient mm -hmm. is a split second. Uh, it has to do with switching. What yes. happens within those split seconds? So you want one that if this one starts, it will deactivate this one. So from what you're saying, mm -hmm. basically, one will start before the other stop. It does split mm -hmm. seconds. Yes. Yes or no? Yes, yes, yes. So that means there is a possibility that it's, uh, there is a possibility that zero point zero milliseconds, the two contactors will be on. Remember, the civil mm -hmm. magnetic, and it's not. We don't. We, we are not using transistor. You know, transistor can switch very fast, but we're using a contactor. So that means we're yes. not safe. Yes. Are we? Yes. So yeah, now, we, we and we we don't want complexity. At the end of the day, we'll talk about cost too. Okay. Cost. Now, if you want a system that would deactivate that one, like I said, you still need another coil. Let me put it that way. That will deactivate it. So, and that will that will cost us another uh, another amount of money. So, what what about just putting something that will not allow you to start at all? I think that's our best bet. Not until you press okay. that stop. Not until that one stop. Yeah. It won't allow you to start. I think is, is okay. that one okay? Uh, it's still much better because that one we, we won't need to buy another contactor or relay to to do to do our switching. Because normally, if you remember this uh, circuit, uh, what was it called? Start data. Which we still get into. We still get to start data connection. If you remember start data, then we, you need a timer in between that will switch. But remember, even if they jam in start data, I see the same face. L one is still L one. L two is still L two. L three is still L three. I don't want to complicate things, but I think you understand what I'm saying. So even if they jam, you won't have an issue. But this face reverser, so one, it has to stop. So if you're, and if you need a relay to stop it, then you need another, you need another relay, which will cost you another amount of money. So this is what we have now. This is our normal circuit. So let's simulate, I just rearrange it so that if, if we forget to, if we forgot to put on our breaker, we won't be able to do anything. Understand? So let's start. So I break it off. Now, even if I press forward, it won't run. I press forward. So let me on our breaker. So forward. Forward is already moving forward. We'll continue to move forward in Jesus' name. <laughs> so to go backward, let's stop. And press reverse. You can see. So now we need we we, we don't want the situation where we can press the two together, bam, and our breaker, pum, o to trip, yawa don't gas. So all we need to do is to use another auxiliary contact of the contactor, a normally closed contact this time around for the two. That means contactor one will not start if contactor two is running. Contactor two will not start if contactor one is running. So we need auxiliary contact, just as you said. But this one won't start, won't stop it for us. It will only prevent us from what from starting. So Let's do it. I'm just trying to make sure this thing is decent. Uh, okay. Oh, my wires will be Sorry, I think I, because I, I rotated the, what's it called? As I rotate the the motor,
Okay, uh, Joseph, say something. Please say something. I was looking at my computer then. You want me to unmute you? Joseph, unmute. Oh, yeah, we are with you. Yeah, you already said what I was about to say. I was thinking maybe we can put a normally close contact between that two MCR and one MCR. So anytime, anytime, um, when it is normally close, when current is um, when current is when it is, it is being energized, it will open. So when it is open, the contactor M M M C R one won't work. So that was what I wanted to say, but you already said it. That's perfect. Yeah. That's perfect. That's perfect. All right, thank you. So now we can move forward now and we need those guys. Let me include them now. Yeah, our library. Uh, relay contacts. We need two, right? Normally close. One. Mm -hmm. One we work for MCR one, Abby. Mm -hmm. Okay. Please mute yourself. Go for MCR two. You done that. Okay, let me mute you. Don't worry. Done. So one for MCR2. So that means this contact, this contact belongs, this MCR2 contact belongs to this. This MCR1 belongs to this. I think we all understand that. So, so we want to make sure that if two is running, one will not start. If one is running, two will not start. So we'll put it in between. So this is the this is the supply to contactor two, two MCR. So we want to make sure that if we want to start two MCR, we have to make sure that one MCR is not. So this one MCR normally close contact. So if this one, if this one MCR contact or this one here is not working, then this contact will remain closed. Then I can start two MCR. But if it is working, then this contact will be open. So I can't start. Same thing with this now. So let's do that now. Okay. It's a command wire, not a power cable. Okay. Just trying to create a neat circuit. Don't mind me, please. Okay. Ah, okay, I get you now, Engineer Shola. Now I get you. Maybe I didn't understand what you're trying to say there. So now, if we start, we've only connected one. So on your breaker, so if we start, it will work, forward will run. If we stop, it will stop. That stopped already. So now, let's start two. Oh, I need a question. What can tell me the meaning of this blue that is still showing here? If you know the meaning, please let me know. So two is working now. Now, if you notice that when two is working, you can see that this contact is open. It's not closed again. This contact MCR, one MCR. The normally close MCR, one MCR is, is open now. So if I press two MCR, to, if I press forward to start, you can see it's not what? It's not starting because one MCR is working. And when, when one MCR is working, it's normally close contact will become open. And it is that one that, gives power to this. So let me stop now. Can see then start forward. So who can tell me the meaning of that blue? If you have the reason uh, the if you know the meaning of that blue that is station even after we stop, please let me know. So let's do that for the second one too. Let's do that for the second one. So 
so that none of them will start when one is walking. So I asked the question then, if you know the meaning of that blue that is always showing, even after you stop, please let me know. We're all engineering students. Am I not an engineering student? <laughs> so let's start on your breaker. Your breaker is on. Forward, start. Reverse. Then, if I want to start reverse, you can see. The motherfucker is not starting because this one is what is running. If I stop, then start. If you walk, so the next thing we'll be doing tonight is we we've, we've designed the circuit. The next thing we'll be doing is probing. So, who can tell me the meaning of that blue? If if you want me to tell you, where I please signify. If you want me to tell you, please signify the reason this blue is still showing. Please signify if you want me to tell you. Just comment I or whatever. I will tell you the reason that blue is still showing. If nobody is talking, then I will. Okay, better. Now, okay. Um, that's what we call the. Uh, that's what we call. Uh, you know how does a um, synchronous motor work? How do they work? That's the answer to our, our question. How do synchronous motor, how do they work? They work by inducing EMF. Like there is a stator and there is a rotor. That stator, it's permanent. The rot uh, that stator is permanent. It might be the one with our coil. And the, uh, the stator is the one moving. So now, once you give three phase supply to the coil, which might be the stator or rotor, le uh, magnetic, uh, the electric field inside will induce a magnetic field. And when that magnetic field is induced, then the motor will turn. So now the problem is, when we're designing, uh, when we're defining uh, induction, is we said when a piece of, when a metallic material, uh, uh, what was this definition? I want to define according to, uh, what is this our textbook that we use then? This physics textbook, uh, P and OKK. Okay, okay. So when, when, a me, uh, when, when a conductor, moves across a magnetic field, what will happen? An EMF is what is induced. So now, that means if I, if I, if I have a magnetic field and I'm, I keep striking a conductor inside it, then EMF will be induced. So now, remember, when our coil was working, it generated a magneto, magnetomotive force. That means there is still a magnetic field inside. So, and remember, Immediately I stop, our motor is still spinning due to inertia because there was no load on it. So that spinning is cutting across that magnetic field and it's generating what we call back EMF. So it's giving voltage back. So instead of being the motor, now it's not the alternator, it's the generator generating voltage. Now instead of the, you know, it's, it was the motor, it, that, this our motor is the motor that is receiving voltage before, that is receiving electric signal, converting it to magnetic field and, uh, Turn into rotational rotational force. So, but immediately we remove power, that magnetic field doesn't disappear easily, and our and our and our stator is still rotating. So that rotation, that that means that stator is cutting across the magnetic field. So cutting across that magnet, magnetic field means another EMF will be induced. So it is that those those blue that you are saying, they are EMF that was induced by that magnetic field. Do you understand now? Is it clear? Please signify if it's not clear. I they've been telling me I have another. I'm coming, let me show you this. Please signify if it is not clear. They said I have another, I'm having another 10 minutes left. The meeting we had in 10 minutes. So, so the blue signify exactly back EMF. Yeah, that's back EMF. So at times, if you have a very good load on your, on your motor, that will stop it outrightly, you won't have back EMF. But if you don't, most times, people they, 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 uh, people create a protection for it by using a bus bar. Yes, back EMF is the blue. They use bus bar. They will put it on this protection so, so that that bus bar is the. Some people use it a time. They call it shock, shock. It's like a resistor. People people like engineer will have used it in their electronic circuit. They use they call it shock. So that would be what will dissipate the energy. And most of our contactors too. Some contactors that controls inductive load. They have what we call freelancing diode. Connected across their terminal that will make sure that 
magnetic field. It the contacts too. That our conductor too. You know when it energizes, when there's a magnetic field, the return of the conductor too can also induce EMF. When it is that, yeah, that black, that small, you know, uh, especially in, in a control system that use PLC, you know, you only need a minute voltage to, trip, to trigger on and off anything. So because of that, we will also put that freelance diode. We call it freelancing diode. Uh, connected across the uh, A1 and A2 of our contactor to make sure voltage will not go back to the source, to the supply. <laughs> well, uh, let's do some little probing. Uh, I want us to take measurement now. We've been simulating, we want to take measurement. So let's check. Uh, this is our load, our motor. I want us to check for the torque. That's one thing from our motor. One, okay. The same motto, I want to check. Let me pick another plotter. I want to check um, um, what now? Um, power consumption. So I want to check the, the power in kilowatts. You guys will see something that they used to teach us in school then. You'll see it now. Let me see if there's any other thing that I can check. Let me see if there's any other things that it's important that I can check. We should have seen the talk. Mechanical. Uh, okay, we are seeing the angle. We, we can see the angular speed already. Let's check the efficiency. Oh, we don't have units for efficiency. Here. Let's check the mechanical power here. The mechanical power to in, in kilowatts. So I will start my circuit now. I want you to note, take note of something. So on your breaker, forward. One, two, three, go forward. Remember M2 is our electrical power. M MI3 is our mechanical power. Let's start. What do you see at first? Do you see something? Did anybody see anything? Anybody see anything? I will start again. Let me stop now. I've stopped now. We start again. Take note of, okay, let me remove, let me remove, uh, let me remove, we don't need MI3. We don't need MI3. And then, um, uh, do we need MI1? Okay. So look at MI2 now and tell me what you see again. Please focus and look at it. Yeah, start. I'm starting five, four, three, two, one. Oh, I've, I've not put on my breaker, I'm sorry. Again, five, four, three, two, one. What did you notice? I won't continue if I didn't hear anybody comment. What did you notice on, on MI2? I will repeat this thing again. I need people to comment before I continue. Please comment, just comment there. I will do it again so that you can see. So that you can see. I won't continue if nobody is commenting about this thing. No, you're wrong. You're wrong. Let me start again. Five, four, three. Look at the power, the kilowatt. I want you to look at the power the motor is consuming. That's a uh, voltage transferring by our power factor. That's why we're rating in kilowatts. Five, four, three, two, one. You guys are not seeing what I want you to see. The power decrease instantaneously and, and increase instantaneously and decrease before going to normal. Okay. You are, you are, you are partially right. If you, what I'm trying to show you is, okay, let me see if I can use the plotter. Normal simulation, plotter. Why? Okay. We only have four minutes left. Exactly, startup current. It was I. Initial, initial top was I. Then can't I add this?
Oh, my plotter is not working. I want to add one of those to see the the way it's moving. You can see the startup current is high. That's what we call startup current. That's why they said it will use stand theory of this normal current when starting up because of the initial torque. This thing was at rest before. You understand? It was at rest. So immediately you start, it will use it will consume more power to start. So let's start now. Let me on my breaker, then forward, then adjust. You can see it's jumping to 40 something before stabilizing on three. So now what I will do now is let me increase the load on the motor. The torque on the motor. The torque is the load actually. Let me increase. It's on 1.6 for now. Look, look at what's happening to the motor RPM. Look at the RPM and the and the and the and the power consumption. The more the load I have on it, you can see it's called resistive torque. The more power I'm what I'm consuming, and it's also affecting my RPM. So I'm consuming 12.5 kilowatt now on six on on, on a load of six stock. Let me see this six stock now. Let me see my starting my starting uh, my starting power now. We even see the current very soon. I'll measure the current soon. We we attain 45. 45. Let me see if I can measure this. I want to check the RMS voltage. Okay, let me adjust the voltage is okay. Why is my voltage not stable? Only God knows. Let's check voltage from source. Okay, let's get a nice voltage. I think that's better. It's stable. RMS voltage is okay. Component properties. I want it's RM, let's let's check the frequency. So we're on 60 hertz now. 60 hertz. I think what now let's check something. 415 volts. 60 hertz gives us on 12.5 kilo 12.5 uh, kilowatt load gives us 1759 RPM. Let me increase reduce my frequency now to 50. You know we're in Nigeria here. Yeah. My frequency from the sub from the source. Let me go to 50. We are in Nigeria. This thing will soon we will have to join this class again. My frequency is 50 now. Start. What happened to my RPM at a lower frequency? What happened to our RPM at a low frequency? What do you guys notice? What happened to our load, our consumption?
I'm just waiting for that guy so that we can just round up for tonight. This power has really caused an issue for us. Okay, other guys are joining. So let's just wait till they are here so that we can just round up for tonight. I was on join then, so the join went off and my internet went off too. I'm just trying to see a way we can simulate the effect of the effect of um of over current or under current. Okay, people are. Are, are gradually coming back. We have less than seven minutes uh, before this thing goes off again. I'm trying to use a circuit breaker then that we can a circuit breaker that we can um, that we can alter. This is just a normal circuit breaker. Uh, it's just a normal disconnector. Okay. Now, if you notice this one now, the rated uh, frequency is 50, it's 60, so we turn it to 50. Um, the rated uh, current is 200 amps. So we said, you said our load is 50, was 50 amps then. So can you guys hear me? Let me see. Okay, we said our load was uh, 40 amps, and so let's make this now 30 amps, the current 30. Oh, sorry. Um, I think I'm making some mistake. Uh, conventional and closed timer. Okay, sorry. Let's this one be sure. So this is the rated current down here. Let's make it 30. So our rated current is 30. Uh, maximum frequency is 50. Rated frequency is 50. Okay, maximum rated frequency was 50. 60. 60. So that means you can use 50 or 60. So the power loss per pole is just 10 watt. You know, they will lose power based on, you know, these things are, these are contact. So we've set up our, our circuit breaker now. Let's see what we can simulate here. Yeah? Our circuit breaker is 50 amps, uh, 50 at 30 amps. And um, what was our torque here? Yeah? Let me start and let's see our motor torque. Our torque is zero. So, are you guys with me? Okay, good. So, we put on our breaker to start the motor. So, it's running now. You can see we are one five. There is no there is no, we are not consuming any power because there is no torque. But this is not, this is an ideal situation. But most situations are not ideal. Let's increase our torque to like three. So three is giving us uh, 5.3 kilowatts. Five, 10 kilowatts will be how, how many amps now? 10 kilowatts will be how many amps? Let's calculate. That's 24 amps. That's 24 amps. So it will increase. So how many, what, what would 30 amps be? 30 amps will be, um, oh, 
Hold on. That's around um, 12 kilowatt. And remember, our, our breaker is rated 30 amps. So let's see what will happen. We're on 11 kilowatt, 11, 12, 11, 12. So let's go more than. We're on 12.7. Our motor still has some tolerance. Let's go maximum. Our breaker, it's supposed to trip now. It didn't trip. Probably I didn't set it. Okay, it has tripped. Yeah. Our breaker has tripped. Because of, so I told you that it can withstand some certain current for some seconds. And I think that was what happened. So let's reset again. And let's start. It has tripped again because why? Our load, is, our torque is high. So let's restart again and reduce our torque. Or well, we've reduced our top to 5.6 now. So let's start again. Start. So we're on 8.5 kilowatts. So let's increase our top. Six. That's 12 kilowatts. That's almost optimum. Switching 12, 13, 12, 13. This thing can trip at any point. In time. So if I go to seven, it will show trip. Seven, that's 14 kilowatts, 14, 15. It should trip very soon. Probably still within the tolerance range. Um, or maybe my calculation is not correct because uh, 30 amps, 415. Okay, not two RMS. I think my calculation is kind of faulty. Uh, but now let's see what will happen with transient, like that startup current. Let's stop and start the second one. Let's see what we start up current can cost. It tripped. Um, Joseph, have I answered your question now? Because we rated our circuit breaker just like our electric motor. Now, what happened when we start? The circuit breaker did what? It tripped. If you can hear me now, please signify, Joseph. Because that was the question you asked then. Because the ratings of our electric motor is almost the same thing as a circuit breaker. Because of the because of the starting current, you can see the breaker trip. Let's start again and see. You start, bam, instantly it's tripping. Why? Because of the rating of our circuit breaker. So let's increase the rating of our circuit breaker. Oh, sorry. Okay, let's start again for the last time and see. We have one minute remaining. Start. Bam, it tripped. So we can either increase the rating of circuit breaker or reduce the rating of our motor. So this kind of circuit breaker now, let's go to 40 amps and see if we can get something done with 40 amps. Let's go to 40. We have limited time. This thing will soon go off. We have one minute remaining. Let's see if 40 can do or something. Let's start. On your breaker and start. Okay, it's able to withstand 40 amps. It's able to withstand 40 amps. So if I increase the current now, the load on the motor, let's say something happened and that motor got stopped, the, the load will increase. The torque will increase. To increase, it's still withstanding it, yeah? Phew. I think it can withstand 40. I think that 40 amps breaker can withstand the maximum torque of the motor, which is nice. So uh, we can't do much again. I would have loved to alter these things, but... Our time is less than one minute. So if you have any question, just come to the WhatsApp group and ask. I won't be sharing this video with the people that didn't participate. So if you want it, please send me a personal message. And um, there's a way I will know if you actually participated in the in the